Hey guys, Caliblade the Geek here, and we're gonna play another computer game. This is Titanic Adventure Out of Time, a first-person point-and-click adventure game released in 1996 before the James Cameron film, and developed by Cyberflix, who also put out another game I've talked about playing for the channel, the pirate adventure Red Jack Revenge of the Brethren. We might get to that one someday. Although not an FMV game, it plays similarly to those of its time, but opts instead for animating several still frames of photographed live actors. Kinda weird, as you'll see in a bit, but I find it charming. It has loads of secrets and optional content, and multiple endings, so it has a ton of replay value. Anyways, I've always been a Titanic aficionado, and have delved into the stories, facts, and lore surrounding the ship and her doomed voyage since I was a kid. So without further ado, let us begin our voyage. Okay, everybody, before we get started, I wanted to quickly also mention that this game has multiple endings, six in fact, I believe, and so there are multiple ways to finish the game, which actually offers a lot of replay value, which is really cool, but uh, naturally there is the ideal ending and the least ideal ending, and then different combinations in between where certain actions you took or didn't take during the game um, will affect the final result you get. So I'm not sure exactly which ending we're going to go for, going to kind of wing it. I know that there are certain things you can sort of waste your time on which will prevent you from getting the ideal ending, but it's still a lot of fun stuff. So we will see if our character gets too distracted from what he's supposed to be doing or not as we go. Let us begin. Once again, today's top stories. London has endured another night of German bombing. Most damage was concentrated in the East End. The RAF has now, struck this game enemy aerodromes in La Havre during World and the War Two. And Russia, as I mentioned, there German is some time travel reported around elements Leningrad. in this story. In Asia. The American fortress uh, at my landlady's is knocking on the door. Defiant, but Japanese forces are you reported nearing the Burmese oil fields. No and that concludes the news summary. We now return you to our music program. You don't pay your rent. You are a very naughty boy. Anyways, as I was saying, um, the idea is that you had a mission on the Titanic when you were a secret agent before the war, and you failed utterly. And, um... What you're trying to do is you get a second chance to go back and try again and undo the wrongs you made for a final result that's ultimately better and doesn't result in World War II and one and everything else that happened bad after uh, the Titanic went down. Once again, today's top stories. London All right, let's look at shit really quick and see what bombing. we can find uh, Most around damage his was concentrated flat. in the East End. The RAF has struck enemy aerodromes He's obviously in the been obsessed and the low countries. with the Titanic ever since Russia, it went down. Further German losses are reported Not only because he was Leningrad. there for it, but in Asia, because of the American what went wrong and what could have been. is still defiant, but Japanese so forces cool. are reported I nearing the Burmese oil fields. I want one of these, even though I don't have a mantle for it. And that concludes the news summary. We now return you to our okay, music we got his memories book. Titanic sinks. 1,250 perish. I believe that's actually the uh, London paper that actually was put out that day. April 16th, 1912. in this game, and then use the mouse to interact with stuff, which is a little different. Again, today's top stories. Let's check out the desk. London has endured all of this is a little bit of exposition about who you are and all that stuff, and 
a few uh, other things, so let's have a look. Okay, I don't know what he'd want to use that for. Or rather, don't want to know. We got some dead pigs. Fun. Uh, that's right, it's a postcard from his friend Jack. Who is not Jack Dawson from Titanic, nor is it the real Jack who was on Titanic, Jack Thayer. This is a fictional Jack. Let's see. November 29th. Uh, can't tell if that's 17 or 14, but anyways. Heard you're back from France. Hope you'll even the score yet with the bastards who fired you. Sorry to bring it up, but I think you were treated horribly. No references, no pension. What will you do next? Keep me posted, Jack. Okay. Another postcard. Also from Jack. From Tunisia. May 1939. Looks like war in Europe, doesn't it? Situation here, nervous. French are still fine. No. <laughs> French are still wine women in singing, as usual. What will you do if there's fighting? Keep fixing watches? Seriously, I know whatever happened on the Titanic was bad, but it was 25 plus years. You can't change the past. Look ahead. We'll talk when I return. Cheers, Jack. It's all in the past, man. Okay. Got some vintage magazines here. Let's see. I keep clicking off of that, I don't need to. This uh, Death Tarot card is a memento from the Titanic when he was there, so we'll find out more about that later. It's a cool tarot card. What else do we got here? Got his watch. See here, this isn't about your dedication. Pringle certainly attests to your loyalty. No, your dismissal stems from the Titanic mission. That failure can no longer be ignored, especially now. I am sorry, but someone must shoulder the blame. The service, you understand. We can't be held responsible. So essentially what happened is his failure to complete his mission got him fired from the Secret Service, and he has lived his life in misery ever since. We looked at those, we got some cigarettes, some pictures. Huh, he went on the Hindenburg. Because of course he did, right? Crap. Most damage was concentrated 10th of August, 1914. His Majesty's government regrets to inform you that your services in the Office of the Secret Service are no longer needed. Termination to be effective immediately. With regrets, Commander T.S.D. Hippel. Hippo? Hippo. <laughs> blah, 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 blah. Hippo. Yep, Commander T.S.D. Hippo. coming in. What can I do? Ah! Gotta get back in time. The past forever locked in regret. 
But what if the past could be changed? Thirty years have come and gone since the night that saw the end of the world, my world. The service needed someone on the Titanic. They chose me. I was to wait for a signal from my contact, so I remained in my cabin. I left only once. Georgia was on board. We'll be leaving a lot more than once. And that's when it came. There'd be no second chance. It was Sunday, April 14th. Too late, you see, for the Titanic for me. What if I'd met with my contact, prevented disaster? What if the past could be changed? What then? There she is. So cool. Here is our first class stateroom on B deck, I believe. Before we begin, let's quickly uh, check my settings here. I'm going to go ahead and put subtitles on just to make it easier on all of you watching. Got regular volume, the theme volume, which the music in the game is pretty loud when it plays over people, so I'm just gonna kinda. It'll still be plenty loud, I promise. And just in case my computer derps out on me, I'm gonna go ahead and do a quick start save here. Well, now I'm not hearing any music at all. Maybe it will start in a moment. Let's have a look around. Well, someone at the door. Good evening. I am Smethels, your steward. And, if I may say so, it is good to see you up and about. Hmm. You've been yes. in your cabin the whole voyage. A touch of the Maldon Mare, was it? What's Maldon Mare? Seasickness can be quite unpleasant especially if it's one's first crossing. Since you haven't been out of your cabin, may I instruct you on how to get assistance while on board the Titanic? Well, I remember more or less, but for posterity, yes, I could use some help. Very good. We of the White Star Line hope that your stay on board Titanic is as relaxing as possible. As you explore the ship, please bear in mind the following advice. The mouse is your hands, the keys your feet. If you find the screen too dark or too bright, follow the directions on the control screen help panel or consult your manual on adjusting your monitor. To find the control panel wow, help and other features, click on the life preserver at the bottom of the screen. The control panel has a help button, as well as a quit and save game feature. You may also adjust the volume. Blur, blur. Test All the, the things settings just by like clicking that. on the black knob. You may also switch the theme music on or off. After making any adjustments, click OK to return to your current game. Wandering the ship, if you notice a hand, it indicates something to click on. May I suggest you do so? Okay. Several personal items in your room, a brown satchel and a pocket watch, are quite useful to you during your voyage. Take them with you. You shall want to converse with other passengers. If you fail to understand them, click on their face. They will repeat their last sentence. Wouldn't it be the nice person. if it worked like that in real life? His office is on C deck, just off the forward grand stairs. The elevator, or lift as we call it, has an attendant who can direct you to various sections of the ship. The lifts are located behind the forward grand staircase. Lastly, you may always find me by returning to your cabin, C-73, oh, no. We're on C -deck. and ringing My the bad. bell to the right of the door. Your correspondence. 2,200 on board, and they all want messages delivered promptly. Even if it is 1912, 
and the Titanic, the most advanced means of sea conveyance ever devised, I still have only two hands. Okay, so we have a message. 2,200 on board, and they yes. all want messages delivered promptly. We know. Even if it is 1912, and the Titanic, yes, the most advanced means of sea conveyance ever devised, I still have only two hands. Let's see. Meet me by the electric 2, camel. 2,200 on now. board. And they Shut all up. want messages delivered hmm. promptly. Yes. Even if it is 1912, Must I repeat and the Titanic, again? the most advanced means of sea conveyance ever devised, so we have to I meet a still lady have named only two pee -pee. hands. <laughs> pee -pee. Anyways, uh, Penny Pringle, she's our contact. And they We're all just gonna pretend want he's not messages talking. delivered promptly. Even if it is 1912, here, a map of the ship Thanks. for you. Jeez. Compliments of the White Star Line. I have taken the liberty of indicating your cabin, C-73. Of course, on a Sunday evening at this hour, there won't be many people out. Will there be anything else? I could do that with my eyebrow, but uh, I can't hold it there for as long as he can. So yeah, let's ask who PP is. A young lady. A most insistent young lady. And in his original timeline, he decided not to meet with that lady, his contact, and instead got distracted by his old flame, who he mentioned in the intro there. So, what is the electric camel? The electric camel? An exercise device. They say it is good for the liver. I, I wouldn't know. know. It's located in the gymnasium, on the boat deck, on the starboard side. That's the right side, in case you had not been informed. What's the ship's left side called? Port. Port. See? If you're facing towards the front of the ship, the left side is the port side. Have you unpacked? You'll find your trunk key in your bag, on the bed. And remember your personal effects your watch and bag. If you require additional assistance, please ring the bell by the door. Good night. Well, that was abrupt. What if we had more questions to ask? Yeah. So that's Smevels, our steward. A man who obviously likes to repeat himself. I don't know, that was weird. I think that was a bug. All right, so we now have free reign of the ship, but let's have a look around our cabin before we go uh, adventuring too far. Grab our bag from the bed. Let's have a look inside. Right now it's just our key for our trunk. Steamer trunk key. Cool. Alright. What's this? Okay, this is the map of the ship, which is really cool. It lets you go through all the different ship decks. And it actually does become extremely useful while playing later. Okay. Let's have a look at what's on the menu. So if I had been on the Titanic, on the night it went down, this is what I could have had for dinner earlier that evening. A lot of it does not look particularly appetizing to myself, however. Especially that Waldorf pudding. Blech. If that's the same thing as Waldorf salad, which is really nasty. It's like got grapes and mayo in it and crap. Alright, we're gonna watch. That's gonna be extremely important for us. We're gonna need to keep track of the time later on. And throughout the game, actually, uh, it has uh, timed events rather than the entire game being a timed game itself. So we'll encounter certain triggers or certain things we do will force the time to move on and so on and so forth. Kind of like the Sierra game, uh, 
the Colonel's bequest, which is really awesome. Anywho, let's just keep uh, that near us for now. Still pretty early. get to the trunk. Maybe we don't open it yet. It has uh, some more things I'm going around in circles here. It has some more uh, information about our mission and what it is we're doing here. Ooh, pretty loud. I don't think I ever noticed that screen before. Okay, maybe I can't open it just yet. I think I have to go and meet my contact on board the ship first. So let's uh, save our game and then go find Pee Pee. <laughs> yeah, I'm not gonna stop sniggering at that. I'm too immature. There we go. already mentioned earlier, but they did really a great job, especially for when this game was made, and recreating as much of the interior of Titanic as possible, and as accurately as possible. Alright, so if we have to go and meet Penny, that's upstairs, the electric camels in the uh, gymnasium on the main boat deck. So we'll need to head up the grand staircase, but uh, let's talk to this guy first, see who he is. A fine night to be indoors, cold as the dickens outside. Cold but clear. Okay, uh, who are you? Clear as a bell, and the stars, oh you should see a million stars in God's firmament. A congregation of light. The name's Trout, the Reverend Edgar Trout. I'm returning from a mission in Africa, to Sunapee, New Hampshire, where we, I mean, I live. Emily, my wife, she's dead. My sympathies. Thank you. We had looked forward to this journey, but she died at Port Sahid, though it was Nyasaland that killed her. The doctors, you know, never did find all the parasites. We've just ended a hymn sing in the second class lounge. It's the Titanic's first Sunday afloat. What did you sing? <laughs> For all yeah. those in peril on the sea. Tell me, it's true. They are did. you religious? Although, all of the people you meet up with in this game are fictional. They did indeed sing that song that day. Okay, so, uh, am I religious? Um... Well, I'm a secret agent. I better be pretty guarded, so, uh, none of your business. Well, good evening. Wait, before you leave, I was wondering... Perhaps you'd care to make a donation to our mission in Nyasaland. Mm, I don't know. Sorry to have bothered you. Perhaps another time. Good evening. Oh, see, there's a time, uh... Trigger right there. Now, you don't have to actually make the donation or do any of that. Not a requirement. He will still, uh, be somebody we have to talk to later on more. Okay, so let's continue on our way up to the boat deck now. It's been quite a while since I've played, but I think I still remember my way around for the most part. Okay, that's the cafe. We want to go all the way up. 
across the smoking room. deck down from where we want to be. Who's that? Riviera broke me. Damned Frenchman. What do you want? How do I get to the gymnasium, sir? Health nut, are you? It's on the boat deck. Above us. Night. Yeah, it's a night, all right. A regular night to remember. Ah. That is a uh, novel and film about Titanic night to remember. That I see what they did there. All right. Well, all we gotta do is uh, take these stairs upward. We'll talk to him in a bit. He always hangs around there this time of night, so. Stack there it did not function as an actual smokestack. It was just the uh, chimneys for the kitchens and whatnot. They just thought adding a fourth would make the ship look uh, more grand. Speaking of grand, here, here's a gymnasium. Okay, here we go. There she is. Glory be. It's about time. You're late. Another five minutes and I'd have cancelled your mission. Glory be. All right. You must have been the one who sent me the card. Yes, I'm Pringle. Penny Pringle. From the Bureau of Secrets. You didn't think they'd plunk you down on this bucket of bolts and millionaires alone, did you? I'm sorry for being late. What a botch up. Some idiot in the war office booked me into second, not first class. Oh. And I've had a fine time of it, too. The crew wouldn't let me in the first cabin at all. It's just today I located you. What did you want to tell me? Look at this. Okay. A German colonel named Zeitel. He's inspecting their embassies in Havana, Washington, and Mexico City. We know better. Okay, there's our main villain for the game, everyone. Ten days ago, the Bureau got word that Zeitel has in his possession a priceless copy of the Rubaiyat of Omar Khayyam, stolen two months ago in Paris yeah, after it its purchase by a very highly placed member of His Majesty's government. What's the Rubaiyat? The Rubaiyat's a book. Birdie. A collection of medieval Persian poetry, a passion of his lordships. Poetry. Persians. The German High Command must think it's important enough to have their top man smuggle the lot on board. What's Zeitel going to do with it? It's your job to find out. Yep. His lordship's watching this very closely. Very closely indeed. I wouldn't fumble this chance either, unless you fancy spending the rest of your career in some grotty Midlands back office shuffling paper about. What are the Germans up to? Have you seen the report? In your trunk? On the international situation? Tried. I'd jolly well read it if I were you. Is Zeitel travelling alone? No. He's with the protégé. Name of Hadelitz, I believe. The two spend a great deal of time in the Café Parisien. Nibbling pastries. Mm. Get into the wireless room. I don't know or care how. Officer Morrow wouldn't let me in. 
See if Zeitel's received or sent any telegrams about the Rubai. You've got a cryptograph in your trunk. It'll unscramble the German codes for you. You use the brains God gave you. Watch people. Listen. When you find the Rubaiyat, knock on my door. Which cabin are you in? Cabin F, 34. Use the second class stairs. You should be set. Remember, this is your big chance. Don't fail.